Victober video. So for those of you participating in Victober, I hope that you're having such a lovely reading month. And for those of you that aren't, but are maybe interested in reading some Victorian literature, I hope that some of these books I talk about pique your interest. And so uh, Mercedes at Mercy's Bookish Musings did a video of five-star TBR predictions. So she grabbed several books down from her shelves that she thought would be five-star ratings from her and showed them and then uh, came back and told, you know, after she had read all of the books, talked about what she actually ended up rating them. So a really fun concept, kind of a, how you perceive what you will enjoy and it's just really neat. So, you know, I talked about how I narrowed my Victover TBR down to a mere 15 books and I really did narrow it down. So in doing my research, these were some of the other books that really piqued my interest and books that I think will become new favorite Victorian novels. We shall see. Hopefully. Hopefully they will. So there are 15 of them, ironically, and I will just get started. So the first is Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. Now, the person who convinced me that I really need to read this is Lucy from Lucy the Reader, one of our lovely co-hosts for Victober, and she said this is one of her new favorite books of the year, and actually that she enjoyed it more than Jane Eyre. So I will be interested, though, because I she didn't enjoy Jane Eyre that much. She loves the Brontes, but Jane Eyre um, is, you know, lower on her enjoyment list. So she liked it, but didn't love it like a lot of people do. So I am going to be very curious whether, since I did enjoy Jane Eyre, what this will feel like. It definitely feels less gothic, which could be a strength, because I know sometimes that's the problem with the Brontes, is I have to be in a very specific mood to want to read them, to read the more intense things like Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. Um, so maybe this is, maybe Shirley is one I might feel in the mood to read more. And from what I can tell, Shirley is a historical novel and um, Shirley is like financially independent. And I think she's contrasted with another female character, Caroline, and that Lucy said that this book is just on how amazing women can be. So I have not read a Bronte book. Oh gracious. I think it's, it's definitely been over a year since I've read a Bronte book. Um, so I need to, to fix that. And um, yeah, I, the last one that I read, I did not like, and that was Villette by Charlotte Bronte. So this is another Charlotte Bronte book that I want to give a try, and hopefully I would like it. Uh, my second TBR five-star prediction is East Lynn by Mrs. Henry Wood. And the person who made me really want to read this is Ange, one of the other hosts for Victober. And Ange um, gave it five stars. And so anytime I hear someone who loves Victorian literature giving a Victorian novel five stars, I am automatically open to reading said Victorian novel. And I think this is about a woman who is, um, I think she owns East Lynn, the estate. I'm not exactly sure about the plot, uh, but Anne said there's, it has a lot of different things to it. There's romance and mystery and in intrigue and murder. So all of those things put together into one Victorian novel just sounds so intriguing. And so even though I don't know a whole lot about the plot, I'm just so drawn in and I'm kind of okay going in blind for many Victorian novels because it's just one of my favorite genres. So yeah, I really want to get to East Lynn. Uh, book three is Desperate Remedies by Thomas Hardy, another one that I was convinced by someone to read that. And so that is from the other co-host of Victober, Katie from Books and Things. This is her fourth favorite Thomas Hardy, but from the way that she was talking about it, I was like, okay, this is so next on my priority list of Thomas Hardy. Um, it, the, the plot is a little hard to explain, I think especially if you've never read it. Um, but the main character is Cytherea Gray, and she and her brother are left as orphans. And so then Cytherea goes to be a lady's maid for another woman named Cytherea. But apparently, in addition to that, 
Um, there's so many mysterious and dramatic things happening. So I think it's going to have a lot of mystery elements, which I love. Uh, but then it's also going to be so dramatic because it's Victorian and it's Katie's favorite um, hearty ending ever. So I definitely want to give it a try and I definitely want to read it. Uh, then book four is Garth Owen, A Story of a Welsh Homestead by Alan Rain. Um, and Alan Rain is a Welsh author who I hadn't heard of before Lucy at Lucy the Reader told me about her. Um, that is her pen name. I can't remember her given name. But anyhow, uh, it's just, I think, going to be a cozy book just about everyday life. And I love that. I, th I'm such a sucker for that. That's why I love... Uh, and, and like looking back on childhood, so that's why I love um, Cider with Rosie, uh, All Creatures Great and Small, My Family and Other Animals, all those types of books. I think um, it could be a new favorite if it's written in a way that suits me. So yes, Garth Owen, A Story of a Welsh Homestead. Uh, book five is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So Oscar Wilde is one of those authors who I just had never been interested in reading. But gradually, you know, me wanting to read more Victorian things, and then a lot of people are reading uh, some of his works this Victober, and I think it's he's especially suitable for Victober when you're trying to fit in, um, you know, all of the challenges. His are all pr rather brief, and even his only novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, is brief compared to a lot of Victorian novels. So his is... Um, it's uh, about a man who trades his youth. And so he has a picture painted of himself and he gets to stay young and the picture ages. And it's just supposed to be kind of trippy and just, yeah, a little crazy and absurd. So I'll definitely, you know, have to go in just not knowing what to expect, but being okay with that. Um, so yeah, I want to read the picture of Dorian Gray. The next one is Esther Waters by George Moore. Uh, this is one that Anne from Beyond the Pages uh, told me about. She has not read it. I think she's hoping to get to it. And this is about a fallen woman. And, you know, in the Victorian era, things weren't looking so good for you if you were a fallen woman. So I think it's going to be very tragic. But honestly, like, I kind of dig that now in Victorian novels. I'm like a lot more into it than I used to be. And I don't know why. But maybe I just like the drama. If it's, you know, in a book. Next on the list is one called The Heir of Redcliffe by Charlotte Mary Young. Uh, this is about cousins Guy and Philip. And I think there's like a lot of interpersonal conflict with them. And maybe like romantic drama also. And I think they're trying to, you know, make their way in the world. Which is such a like Victorian trope. Um, but more importantly, while I want to read this, I had totally you know, forgotten um, that this is referenced in Little Women. And it's when a certain event happens. I'm not going to give a spoiler. A certain event happens in Little Women. And um, Joe March is found eating apples and crying while reading The Heir of Redcliffe. Uh, that's how her sisters find her. So just that alone, if Joe March loved it and cried over it, then I want to read this. Book number eight is Beside the Bonnie Briarbush by Ian McLaren. And this is one that uh, Katie, for this year's um, read, a non-British UK Victorian author, talked about. He's a Scottish author, and he was a reverend whose real name was John Watson, which I think is so ironic that he was from the Victorian era, um, uh, like Dr. John Watson in Sherlock Holmes. But anyhow, he lived in a small rural Scottish community, and so... I hear, you know, rural community, Scottish, and he's a reverend writing about his experiences. So I really love, like, clergy as characters in books. And so I really want to read this. Uh, and I think if it's, if it's written well and compelling, I think it's going to be lots of little anecdotes. That's my guess before going in. I think I will like it. It has all of the, the boxes, you know, I've checked all the boxes that would make me think I would like it. Book number nine is Clara Vaughn by R.D. Blackmore. So reading Lorna Doon, I loved it so much. And then, you know, doing more research this year, finding out, oh, you know, most Victorian authors that I've read one from, they've written more than one book. And so R.D. Blackmore is one who I found had written a lot more. 
Clara Vaughn is about a woman who, when she was a little girl, her father was murdered. And when she grows up, she decides she's going to find out who killed him and I think try to bring justice about. That's all that I've gotten from it so far. So I know that I don't want to know more before, you know, reading it. And that's enough to intrigue me. And so I think, you know, when I'm wanting to get to another Artie Blackmore, that's Clara Vaughn is the one that I'm going to pick. Book 10 is one by Miss Margaret Oliphant, who is very quickly coming to be a new favorite Victorian author. And this is Hester. This was, you know, when you see like the top books, top rated books on Goodreads for Margaret Oliphant, or it's confusing because she's also listed as Mrs. Oliphant, but Anyhow, Hester is one of the top ones, and I think it's about a woman who's jilted in her youth, uh, but then she gains financial independence through, I, I think she like inherits the family bank. Um, and so because it's by Margaret Oliphant, I want to read it. And it also sounds really different. Um, I, I don't know. I I'm not sure if I agree with like the Jane Austen comparison as much as I did before after reading Salem Chapel. So, but it, it definitely sounds different from Salem Chapel, and so far, actually, the three that I've read from her have had males as the protagonists, ironically, even though she's a female author. So, I think that'll be interesting to see uh, what, you know, it's like. But also, Miss Marchbanks that, you know, Katie and I are hosting the read-along of this month, I think has a female as the protagonist. Anyhow, I want to read Hester. And then there is a bind-up that is my next pick. And Katie from Books and Things, after reading Salem Chapel, has said that this bind-up is still her favorite. And this is one that Persephone did. And it is The Mystery of Mrs. Blencaro. And then the other one in the bind-up is Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamond. So I think they're novellas, but they're both about scandalous marriages. I didn't want to, like, know any more spoilers than that. I just know they're about scandalous marriages. It's by Margaret Oliphant, so therefore I am interested. Uh, then book 12 is No Name by Wilkie Collins. This is about two siblings who, when their parents pass away, find out that they are illegitimate, meaning their parents were not married when they had them. Um, so they are, like don't have any money. And so I think it's, you know, these two sisters and kind of contrasting their personalities, how they deal with this like really intense time in their life. And, um, Kaylee from Books for MKs really, really liked it. I think she liked it almost as much as The Woman in White. So I definitely want to read more Wilkie Collins, and this one sounds very intriguing. Uh, then another Wilkie Collins that I heard about from uh, Simon at Savage Reads. He loves, he put this in his autumn recommendations, Armadale. Um, and he didn't give many, he didn't give like much of a plot synopsis, but I think he didn't want to um, like spoil the the whole effect if you're going to read it. The main character is Lydia Gwilt and she is, uh, he called her a femme fatale, which I think is really fun to be in a Victorian novel. And so I think it's kind of, you, you aren't sure what to make of her. And this is a chunker of a book, so I would want to take my time with it, but it would be, I think I would have so much reward from finishing it. And there's just secrets and twists and turns and it just sounds fabulous. So I really want to read Armadale. Um, then one that's on a much lighter note and humorous is Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. Uh, this is one that I didn't realize was Victorian, but it's about these three men who take a holiday, a two-week holiday in a boat going up the Thames River. And it's just supposed to be really hysterical. The jokes are still supposed to be very funny today. So I think that's really neat to see uh, a Victorian novel with humor that's still communicates to people and I really want to read it. It just would be fun to read a lighthearted one. And then lastly, uh, one from Geraldine Jewsbury, who Katie and I last year read um, The Half-Sisters and adore The Half-Sisters. So uh, Zoe is about a woman who falls in love with a Catholic priest. So sounds like, a, you know, like a, like a scandal novel. Uh, or sensation novel. That's what I'm trying to say. It sounds like a pretty uh, typical Victorian sensation novel. So those are the 15 <laughs> Victorian books. They're kind of my highest priority. So maybe once I finish five, I'll come back and talk about if they were five star ratings. And yeah, maybe for each five, there's 15 there. So hopefully in the next year, you'll see 
three videos, you know, from me, hopefully sooner than a year, um, cause I really do want to get to them. So yes, those are all the books I wanted to get to. I hope you guys enjoyed this and, um, I will see you for another bookish video soon. Bye.